Hi guys, welcome back to the AutoCAD tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to draw the E26 block, which you should have in front of you. First of all, you need to go to Create New Drawing. We're going to draw the bottom square base of the object first. If we zoom into the lower scale, we can work with the small shapes more efficiently. We want to draw the rectangular base of the object. So if you click on Home, you can then click on the Rectangle tool. Before we start, let's turn on Snap Mode. This ensures the cursor lands at marked points on the grid, making it easier to draw simple shapes. Click on the screen and drag to draw a rectangle any size you want. We now need to set the dimensions, which we can do so by going to Parametric. Click on Linear Constraint. Click on the left and right sides to set the width for the top and bottom lines. At the moment, the width is 200mm. If you double click and highlight the dimension, you can put in the width that you want. The dimensions of the square are 30mm across and 25mm upwards. The base of the object is 30mm. Type that in and press enter. Now, adjust the height by doing the same thing. Click on the top and bottom lines of the rectangle, pull the line out, double click the dimension and type 25mm and press enter. Using the pan tool, which is the hand on the right hand side, we can bring the shape central. Then press escape to exit the pan tool. We don't want the constraints on the screen, so we can hide them. Type in hide on the keyboard and a drop down menu should appear. Click on hide objects. It asks us to select the objects to hide. By pressing control or command, you can select more than one object. And click on the constraints to hide and press enter. The constraints are now hidden. To zoom into the shape, click on the full navigation wheel and click on zoom. Hold down zoom and push the mouse upwards. Use the pan tool to drag the shape back into the middle of the screen, then press enter. Now we want to fully constrain this box, so we go to parametric and click on auto constrain. This applies all the relevant constraints to the box and ensures that the shape doesn't change or deform when other things are added or moved. Once you've clicked Auto Constrain, you select the entire box and press Enter. The next step is to create the top left semicircle on the object. Click on Home and click on the Line tool. The line must be 10mm upwards according to the dimensions of the block. Drag the cursor along and the Snap tool will snap you to a specific point on the grid. Click on that point to specify the next point. It now asks how tall we want the line to be. Type in 10mm and press enter, and then escape. In order to make sure the line is always perpendicular to the box, we have to constrain it. Click on the perpendicular tool in parametric. Click on the top line of the box and click on the perpendicular line. They have now been auto constrained. We now want to draw an arc using three points for the semicircle. Click on home, then click on arc. We know the start, the centre and the end, therefore we shall use this tool. Circles are always drawn in an anti-clockwise direction. So click on the top of the line for the start point. Specify the centre point by clicking where the line joins the box and specify the end point by clicking the edge of the box. Once that's done, press escape. Now we want to trim this line here. Go to home, click the trim tool and select the object you want to trim. In this case it's the box. Click on the box. Then you need to click on the boundaries that you want to trim in between. In this case, click on this left line and this right line. Press enter, then click on this line to trim it. Now we want to draw the shape again on the right side. Click on the line tool again and start drawing a line 10mm from the right edge. Move the cursor upwards by 10mm. Select your point, then press escape. Now draw the arc again by clicking the start, center, end tool again. So that the start is at the edge of the box, the centre is in the centre of the semicircle and the end is at the top of the line. Press escape and now that's done. Now we want to trim the middle line again. Click on the trim tool. First select the whole box and as we want to trim this line, the boundaries are this right line here and this left line here. Click on these lines and press enter. Then click on this middle line to trim it and press enter. We want to now extrude the shape to get the base, but firstly we need to join all these lines. If you were to hold the left button down on your mouse and draw a line, you'll get this funny looking shape because AutoCAD can highlight complex shapes, but that's not what we want. 
In order to highlight, you left click your mouse, release the button, you drag your cursor along the screen around the entire shape and then left click again. Once that's done, start typing J on your screen and in a little drop down menu, the word join should appear. Click join and then press enter. All the lines have now been joined together. Now we can extrude the shape. It's best to be an isometric view. Click on extrude and then select the object you want to extrude. So the reason we joined it was to make it one object and not separate lines. Once you've selected the object, press enter and then enter the height of the object. In this case the height is 5mm. Type that in and press enter. You can check how it looks in 3D by clicking the realistic view. And you can use the view cube to see what it looks like at different angles. Let's go back to the 2D wireframe mode. Now we want to draw the top part of the shape which can be drawn by drawing a rectangle and cutting a hole through it. We want to draw a rectangle on this shape, so click on top view. Now if you take your object and look at it from the top, you can see a rectangle shape, which is right at the centre of the bottom horizontal line. This is 10mm across and 20mm in height, so let's draw this. Select the rectangle tool. You need to specify your first point, which you type in as coordinates, 10mm 0. Then specify your second point as 10mm across and 20mm upwards in height, then press enter. Now if we go to southeast isometric view, we can see that the rectangle is on the top surface of this pad that you've just created. When we extrude this rectangle, we'll extrude it from here upwards. So now we need to click the extrude button. Select the rectangle to extrude it and press enter. Drag the cursor upwards and enter the height as 20mm. Change the view to southeast isometric and switch to the realistic view to see how it looks. We've just formed a rectangular block on top of our base. However, this is not what the actual model looks like. If you look at the rectangular box from the side, you can see that there is a specific profile that has been cut through the cross section. We will now draw this cross section on the side profile of the rectangular block. Following that, we will extrude it. To form a 3D object that totally intersects with the rectangular block, we will subtract it to form the shape required. We'll start off by viewing the object from the side in the 2D wireframe mode. Make sure you click on the Object Snapping Adjusting tool to untick Endpoint and Tick Nearest. This just prevents any automatic snapping. Using the Line tool, we need to specify the coordinates of the path that the line should take to form the profile. By clicking on the line tool, you can see that the top left of the rectangular cross section is 0, 0. We'll use this as a reference point to enter the coordinates of the vertices of the profile. So we start off by going along by 5mm, type in 5,0 and press enter. The next point is at the top right corner of the box. So here we unhighlight snap to drawing grid to free up the cursor movements. Now type 15,0 and press enter. The next point is 15mm below this, so now we type 0, minus 15. This is because the positive y direction is upwards, however we want our line to go down. The next point respective to the last is minus 5, 10. The next point is minus 5, 0, then press enter. The next point is minus 5, 5, press enter and we are back at the original start point, completing the profile. Now press escape. Now let's switch to an isometric view where we can see that the profile is now a 2D shape on the rectangular side. We need to group this set of newly drawn lines to allow us to extrude the profile. As we try to select these lines, the background shapes become highlighted too, which we don't want. We can type in HI and the command hide objects should appear. We can highlight the shape we want to hide, then press enter. Now we switch to another side view. To join the shapes, first left click, drag, then left click again to highlight the lines. Then type in JO and join should appear. Select this tool and press enter. Switch back to an isometric view. We now want to extrude the profile, so let's click on it and press extrude. 
The width of the rectangle is 10 millimeters, but we can extrude this shape out by 20 millimeters. This is to make it easier for selection later on. Now to unhide the cuboid which we had hidden, type in UNH and the function unhide will appear. Then press enter. All the objects should appear now. Now we want to use a subtract tool as we have a cuboid with an intersecting 3D shape. Let's use the solid subtract tool. The process with this is fairly straightforward. You first need to highlight the shape we would like to keep and press enter. Then we're asked to select the shape we'd like to subtract. We can now select the profile we just created and press enter. The subtraction has now taken place. Now we can change the view from a 2D wireframe to a realistic view. And you can use the view cube to adjust the view. You've now finished drawing the block E26. Well done! The last step is to save the drawing as E26 Technical Drawing followed by your name. Thanks for watching this tutorial and we'll see you in the next one!